Hi, I'm Rita. Welcome, welcome back to my booktip channel, Life Worth Reading. Today, we're going to finally be talking about the worst slash most disappointing books of 2022. Like I've mentioned many times, 2022 was not a great quality reading year for me in terms of me enjoying what I read. There were a lot of things that were disappointing, things that I expected to love and that I didn't, books that I really didn't enjoy, but you know, it's all part of reading and I'm not going to do a disclaimer for this video. I think we're all grown up to hear other people's opinions and to respect them, so that's what we're going to do. And honestly, there are not a lot of books on this list that I hate. There weren't any books that I was like, I hate this book with a passion. I actually felt very mid towards most of the books on this list, even the ones I got two stars. So it's more of a disappointing list of books and like objectively the worst books that I read in 2022. But with that being said, we're going to talk about, I think, 10 books. There are a few that I was like, this is disappointing, but it's not the worst. And there are a few that are just you know like a mix so i think we're going to talk about 10 and without further ado let's just get started by the way these books are not in any particular order like i said there weren't any books that i like hated so we're not going to like the least worst to the worst this is just the list that i came up with and we're going to talk about them in a random order and i am also not counting dnfs towards this i'm just going to talk about the books that i did finish because there are a lot of books that I DNF'd that I absolutely did not like, but that's not included in here because, well, I DNF'd them. So there's no need to include them on this list. And therefore, the first book that I read in 2022 that I finished was The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. And honestly, this is one of those that I was like, this is objectively not a great book, but also I don't hate it. I don't feel very strongly about it. It was just a thriller that I read that wasn't entirely a miss for me. This is about a girl that returns to summer camp many years later where her i think it was three of them so they were like four in a cabin and she was the youngest and she was paired up with his older girls and i think that the three of them disappeared actually i can't remember quite because i read it a year ago but and so she returns to the summer camp all those years later they never found the girls they never knew what happened and so it's like the last summer of this camp and it was just let me tell you something I, I do appreciate Riley Sager as an author because he does know how to set a vibe. The um, atmosphere in his books are always very rich and I can feel myself in the places that he's putting us in and the characters in, which I really appreciate because I feel like a lot of thriller is the ambience as well and the realness of the places that we are and feeling like you're there. So I really did feel like I was there. I love the atmosphere in this summer camp. I love the vibes and just the setting a lot. But the plot really, mm, God, it really failed me. Especially because he, it had a goodish twist at the end. Not the final, final twist, but like one of the twists was actually good. And I wish he had made the whole book about that. But it was just like a little thing. And then the big twist came and you're like, oh. So it was very forgettable. He, it was very like PLL vibes, as in he saw Alison De Laurentiis and he was like, I'm going to make a character like this in my, in my thriller. But unfortunately, no one can be as iconic as Alison De Laurentiis, I don't think. The inspiration never beats the original, and this is just one of those cases. This was not Pretty Little Liars, this was worse. And it was just very forgettable. Thrillers are always very hit or miss. And, and this was this one was entirely a miss for me. So I gave it two stars. But yeah, I don't feel that strongly about it. It's not a thriller that I absolutely hate or anything. But yeah, it just didn't work for me. So there's that. Next up, we're going to be talking about Almond by Soon Yeon Pyun. Now, take this review with a grain of salt. Because this book is very highly rated. It is very loved. And therefore, you know, opinions. Take mine with a grain of salt. I am not saying that this book is objectively bad. It just really didn't work for me. I think like I'm learning that I don't like books that are trying too hard to make you sad. I'm not a big crier in books, which is weird because I'm a very big crier in real life. I cry because of everything, except in books. In books, I don't cry a lot. 
And so books that are just trying to tug at your heartstrings and make you cry don't work for me because I don't and I feel that. In this book, oh my god, I just felt like it was trying too hard to make the reader sad and to make the reader cry and yeah, like that, that just does not work for me. It's about our main character who was born with a condition where it is very hard for him to feel any emotions like on the spectrum of emotions so he has a lot of trouble feeling anger a lot of trouble feeling fear feeling happiness and so he was always um he always grew up with his mom and his grandmother who always reminded him of how to act socially because he couldn't and then on the eve of his 16th birthday, a really random and horrible act of violence happens and he is, finds himself suddenly alone in the world, if you know what I mean. And everything changes for him, he starts getting really bullied at school because he was always, he didn't ever had any friends. And I don't like bullying stories, there's another book that I really didn't like this year that is also about bullying and I just, I don't like those stories, I don't know why. I just can't, they're too horrible for me, I just I don't appreciate them. Not that there aren't good stories to tell, but it's just, it doesn't work for me personally. And so he's very bullied, and then he starts becoming friends with his bully, and it's just, I don't know, I just, I, I, I didn't like it. I, I can't tell you why, it was just too horrible, I couldn't sympathize with our main character because he couldn't even sympathize with himself nor with others and then the whole becoming friends with your horrible bully thing it's like oh bullies are actually good people too They're, you just need to get to know them and it just it did it really didn't work for me so i didn't like my time reading this book i also gave it two stars i wanted to give it less but it is objectively not a bad book it's just i did not have a good time with it and you're not supposed to have a good time but it's like a i don't like what i'm reading not type of good time you know, so this really didn't work for me and I'm learning more about my taste. I don't like bullying stories, I don't like terminal illness stories. And you know, it's all part of it. To learn what you don't do like and what you don't like. And I don't like this one. But again, take my review with a grain of salt. This book is very highly rated. It's very loved. So if you still want to read it, I'd say go for it. Because clearly it didn't work for me because of those personal issues. But it might work for you. Okay, so now let me tell you a book that I definitely don't think it's worth reading. And that is The Maid by Nita Prose. This is more of a mystery, so this is not a thriller. It doesn't have like the high stakes of a thriller. But is it is about our main character. I think her name is Molly, if I'm remembering correctly. And she very clearly has some type of neurodivergency. It is never actually said what she has, if she has it. But I think it's very clear when you are reading the book that she does have those issues. She's very... Um, other people cast her out socially and she's just very naive and she's just a special type of character and i think that it bothered a lot of reviewers that there wasn't ever any mention of what she did have or her label but that's also a tricky situation because not everyone needs a label so i don't know it's just kind of a weird thing there but what didn't really work for me is the plot of this book um she is a maid at a hotel she really loves it it is her job she absolutely adores it she does it everything right and you know it's always good to read a book about a person that really loves her job and is really good at it that's something that i always appreciate and then a high like a really high level patron of the hotel like usual customer is murdered and they're doing an investigation and she's like in the crossfire of this investigation and it's just not a good mystery the character it's hard to say that she wasn't believable because i'm going to say that she wasn't believable because who is doing construction work at this hour i think that the author used this trait that molly has to push the plot forward in a way that it's like everyone is deceiving her around her and she doesn't notice like everyone is taking advantage of her there's like all these horrible people around her and she just doesn't realize it and i feel like that's not a good way to set up a mystery and the mystery itself wasn't good when it was resolved i was like really like this is how you're solving this mystery so i just i, I really don't think there it's worth reading there are a lot better mysteries out there and this one is just 
it's a tricky situation i would say go read the reviews about it on voices reviews but i just didn't feel like as a mystery itself forgetting all of that it is not a good mystery in itself and i feel like the author really took advantage of writing a character is very naive and everyone is just deceiving her the whole time and she didn't understand it and it was just like painful to read because you're just like get a grip girl like look around you like everyone is doing some shady shit and you're just not realizing it and it was just very frustrating to read and the resolution to the conflict and to the mystery wasn't good as well so not worth your time i would say so two stars to this one and there are much better mysteries out there then we have a book that i definitely hated in my time reading and that is a hazelwood by melissa albert this is a book that was a popular YA fantasy a couple of years ago and I decided to pick it up for my library and I was just like, okay, let's give it a try. I did a whole vlog where I read three popular YA fantasies in the summer and oh my god, this was just so painfully bad. It is about our main character Alice whose grandmother wrote this very cult classic, very mysterious fantasy books and they became like a really popular like cult classic but all the copies disappeared and she always felt like bad luck was following her and her mom after her grandma died and so they moved away a lot and then one day her mom disappears and she is like determined to find her and she realizes that like maybe the stories aren't just stories maybe this is a real world that her grandma had access to and she gets a guy from her school that's really into her and really into what her grandma wrote to help her out but like our main character was the worst she was absolutely the worst she deserves no empathy she deserves she deserves no sympathy she deserves nothing okay she was such a bitch and you could tell that melissa albert was trying to write her as like a yeah i'm a bitch like i'm cold but no like she was just horrible like she was just a horrible person this man that was helping her out, I'll never forget like one of the parts where they're in a car together and she's driving and she got like mad at him for something, I don't remember what it is and she like threatened to drive into a tree and like kill them both and I was just like hmm, this is not, this is not good, this is not good girl, like get up, like get out of the car and I just I didn't like the character at all and then when we finally got to like the fantasy part it was so messy I couldn't understand a single thing that was going on I couldn't tell you where they were what they were doing what was happening I had to read each page like two times and it still didn't work I still couldn't understand what was going on it was just a mess I hated my time reading this one star really not worth it then I'm going to talk about the two non-fiction slash memoirs that really didn't work for me this year one of them is Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. Listen, I was interested in this. I love a celebrity memoir. I love memoirs in general, but I do love a celebrity memoir. And I was like, Matthew Perry, sure. I know he struggled a lot with addiction. He has had a very sad life in that regard. And I very, I empathize a lot with people that struggle with addiction. It's very, it's a horrible thing to happen. And I empathize with it a lot. But, but, not only was this book badly edited, like, the order in which things were said did not make sense uh it was not very well organized and also i regret reading this because i just i can't like matthew perry anymore he's an asshole and i say this in the most i don't know loving way possible like he's just an asshole um the way he talks about women in this book is a sight to behold because who let this happen? He talks about women like literally as if they were objects. Like I can't, like I'm not even exaggerating to like make a point about how he's um, misogynistic or anything. Like he legitimately talks about women as if they were objects. All his points, like he said multiple times, like I just wanted to be famous to get laid. I just wanted to be famous to get girls. And then he proceeds to talk about every single girl who falls onto two categories, either wanted to fuck him and they did or rejected him and he became bitter about it those are the only two categories in which women stand once once and did get laid with Matthew Perry rejected him like the way he talked about Jennifer Aniston was really gross the way he talked about Julia Roberts was really gross like he fully like exposed so many celebrities and it was just like who allowed this to happen you know 
like what what did Matthew Perry think this would bring to his memoir? There was this one part where he's like he was like 40 when this happened, okay? So he, like he was not a young kid when this happened. And he fully says that he like dated two women at once without them knowing, without their consent for like 6 months because he was just so in love with both of them and he couldn't pick. And I was just and he never even apologized in a book. He was not regretful when they found out. He was not he was just regretting that he lost them basically not apologizing to literally cheating on them for that long and it was just I, it was such a whole mess like i really empathize with the parts about addiction i really i understand his struggles and i i do empathize but there's no excuse for this part and there was just too much of it in the book like i know too much about which women matthew perry fox and didn't fuck and that's just not okay with me and I'm just, I just keep thinking like they did not, they probably did not authorize this information at all. And he still put it out there for the whole world to see. And it just, it feels very disrespectful and I can't like this. So sometimes if I, if I really love a memoir, I will rate it five stars. If I don't, I tend to not rate it. But this one I gave it two stars because Matthew Perry, get a grip boy. You're six years old, get a grip. And then the other memoir slash nonfiction that I rated badly is How to Be Alone by Lane Moore. I thought that this book is very deceiving, first of all. Don't read this book if you think it's going to be a nonfiction about how to be alone because it's not. It's just our... Why are they doing construction work right now? It's about our narrator, Lane Moore, talking about her life and blaming every single person around her for everything that they did wrong to her. It was just, I can't explain how unlikable she was and it was just her the whole time shitting on everyone else around her and how much she has suffered her entire life but she never even goes into depth about why she doesn't have a family or what happened, like how she was treated because she just complains the whole time about absolutely nothing. Every guy she's ever met has earned her so wrong Every friend she's ever had betrayed her. Everyone she has ever met did her wrong. And it's just, it's not her fault at all in any of it. And then there are also some parts where she's just like praising herself. And she's like, oh, I'm so... And then she's just like, oh, I'm so cool. Like my band, my this, my that. Like I'm so awesome. And it was just... I gave it a bad review because this is not what the book was supposed to be about. And it does not say that this book is... A memoir about this person and her struggles. It says that it's a nonfiction about learning how to be alone, and it is not. That's why there's a bad rating. She was very unlikable. Go read the reviews for the Goodreads because people put it in much harsher, but better ways than I do because I just I didn't like this book and I don't recommend it. Then we have another mystery that really didn't work for me, and that is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. Listen, I've never read an Alice Feeney before. I might try another one, but this one just didn't work for me. It is about our main character whose grandma also lives in like a very isolated island, like a reclusive little house where you can always only get by boat. And they are there, the family, the whole family is there to celebrate the grandma's 80th birthday because they've always said that the grandma was going to die on her 80th birthday. It shows she gathers the whole family to so she gathers the whole family there and the the family is so unlikable. Oh my fucking god. The only people that are likable is the main character, Daisy. Because the whole other family is... They're horrible, okay? And then they find the body of the grandma. And then they start dying off one by one. And you have to figure out what's happening. It's very Agatha Christie. I did love the vibes. I love the setting as well. Because I do love a one by one mystery. But the twists oh my god they can really make or break a mystery or a thriller and this one it, it broke it broke for me i can't remember the last time that i hated a twist so badly i ended up i was going to give it three stars but yeah that just it put me it put me down to two stars because i'd say read it just to see what you think of it because it is a very curious ending but for me it it, it really didn't work mm -mm, no and I, 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 I didn't like it. Then the final thriller mystery on this list. Because like I said, those are the most polarizing ones. This is Confessions by Kane Minato. 
I was really enjoying this book at first. It is about a teacher whose really young daughter dies on school grounds and she realizes that it was two of her students who did it. And so the book starts with her exposing who did it without actually saying who did it, but she's like, I know it was you and now you're going through it. But unfortunately, the longer I read it, the least that I liked it because it was one of those books where you're just seeing the same exact thing but from different angles, different perspectives. And so it just got so repetitive that when I got to like towards the end of it, I was like, I've been reading this. I've read this so many times already. I just don't particularly like when books are organized that way or constructed that way because it just gets very repetitive. You're like, I've seen this. You've showed me this. And just because you added this one detail does not make it any more interesting than it already was. And yeah, it just got pro progressively crazier. And I just, uh, I know you always have to suspend your disbelief when it comes to mysteries and thrillers. But this one, it was just very, maybe a little bit too out there for me. A little bit too crazy. I don't know. I just, uh, I was really enjoying it in the beginning, but it just, Towards a halfway point, I was like, I'm, do I'm done with this already. Like, I have seen everything you have to show me. And I don't feel like the ending really made up for it, in my opinion. But again, take this with a grain of salt. A lot of people love this book. Give it a try if you want to. But it just, it really didn't work for me. I would have loved to have it some other way. Where it's like a revenge story of a teacher. But just maybe the book like constructed in a different way. But it is what it is. It wasn't for me. But maybe it'll be for you. The next one is The Beautiful Ones by Silver Miranda Garcia. This book is probably like one of those that is like really disappointing and not objectively bad. Again, a lot of people love this book. I don't want to shade anyone. A lot of people love this book. So give it a try if you want to take all the opinions that you hear with a grain of salt because, you know, it's just an opinion. It is what it is. And this book is about our main character whose name I don't remember. I just remember one name in this book and it's a character that I hate. So good job. On Sylvia Marina Garcia for making me remember the character that I hate, but I can't remember our main character's name. But our main character, this is set like during kind of Victorian times, but like with a mix of fantasy, which sounded like it would be perfect for me. I buddy read this with Chess over from Verity Books, and we both didn't like it. She still liked it a little bit more than me, but I, I really didn't like it because it was about it was a romance. So it was about our main character who has powers of telekinesis. And she is trying to debut into high society because she was always a little bit of a country girl, I guess. And she's trying to debut into higher society because her cousin is married to a woman named Valerie. And my God, did I hate this woman. And so, so like, she's her cousin-in-law, right? Yeah. And she is trying to teach our main character, how to debut into high society, except that she hates our main character, right? And she's like, you'll never debut into high society, you're such a weirdo because of your telekinesis powers. And then they meet, she meets a man, blank, I also don't remember this man, who also has very big powers of telekinesis and he's like, uh, like a circus performer, like a magician, I would say. And so he starts teaching her how to control her telekinesis powers and it's kind of like a romance between them, but he has a connection to Valerie that he keeps from our main character. And I just, I can't stand when a romance is built on lies and in deceiving. And this romance could not work for me because I, I don't want to spoil it, but like, it just, it couldn't work for me because it was not a romance between them. And you're just trying to convince me that these two characters are falling in love when they're not. And yeah, I just, I couldn't stand Valerie and she didn't get what she deserved. It was very mild and she deserves to... Like, it's giving electric chair, you know, like it's giving electric chair. I hate that woman. And it was just a two star read. I didn't like the romance and the whole thing was a romance. So if I didn't like the romance, what is there to like? Nothing. Like the fantasy elements were very mild. And yeah, it was just very disappointing. And I do like Sylvia Miranda Garcia. This is not on her. I do like her. This book just, it didn't work for me. But if you like fantasy and romance, you might like this. But as a romance, it is not very strong in my opinion because I just, I couldn't 
stand for it. I couldn't like it. I couldn't root for it because they were all such horrible people. <gasps> Nina, that's her name, Nina. I just remember. They were all so horrible to Nina that I just, I couldn't root for this and it didn't work for me. So that's, that's, that's something. And finally, another book that was very, very disappointing, but also take this with a green salt because everyone loved this book and that is Violetta by Elisabella Lande. This is my first Isabel Landa. It will not be my last because she's a very prolific author that I highly respect and I do want to try other books from her. But this one also didn't work for me. I was so excited about this book. I thought it would be a five-star prediction because it is a historical fiction about a woman named Violeta who has lived through this, both the Spanish flu and COVID. So she is like talking about her entire life and her entire lifespan and everything that happened. But it was just one of those books where the type of narration can either make or break a story and this one and this one didn't work at all it is entirely like written by Violeta in letters and it was just the most telling and not showing book I've ever read like I couldn't feel any emotion throughout the book because everything was just so bland everything was just so emotionless I, I didn't feel a thing reading this book because you weren't in her head as she's living this moment You're living in her head as she's recounting this moment. So it's like Let's just imagine like um, Her best friend is run over by a car. This is stupid. This doesn't happen in the book But like imagine that and she's recounting this like 50 years later. She's like my friend was hit by a car It was very very sad. I was so sad. I cried and it was just ah. There wasn't that emotional element in it and I wanted to feel the emotions because some very sad things happen But I just I couldn't feel it. I couldn't I was just bored reading it because she was just recounting In like words and words and words and I feel like that doesn't really work because At least in the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo you feel like you're there Like I can't explain it But even when she's recounting you feel like you're there with the character and in this I, I didn't feel like I was there at all. I just, I didn't feel it. I was very emotionless. I was very bored throughout it. So I ended up giving it two stars. And it was probably the most heartbreaking one on this list because I really thought it would be five stars because it has all the elements that I usually do love. But it, 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 it ended up being very disappointing for me. But I do want to try other Isabella Lande books. If you have any other recommendations, I would really love to try it. And it's not the end for us here, but yeah, it... Mm. Not for me. I feel like I've talked about 10. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. I can't count. But yeah, those were the 10 most disappointing slash worst books of 2022. I actually didn't hate any books this year, really. So at least there's that. It was just a very mid year for me. It was just like, this is fine. And when it's not, it's like, this is not good. And I just move on to other things. And I'm happy about that. I mean, it doesn't make for a very interesting video. I wish I could tell you more rage-filled reviews, but I don't have those. Let me know if you liked any of the books that I didn't. And also let me know what was your worst book of 2022 because we all read books that we don't like in years. So let me know which one was yours. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. And I'll see you in my next video. I hope you have a nice day and always remember that life is worth reading.